Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena and today we're gonna be playing with some general once again It's pretty much my favorite archetype at this point I'm known in Boom Arena community for playing general so I may as well just play it I'm gonna just cycle some cards and we're gonna be actually facing John in this first game with 1700 medals Let's see how it will turn out to be uh, He's gonna be playing a Mortar so uh, pretty unexpected from his card rotation, but I don't think it's a bad choice We're gonna obviously respond with the general for that and my opponent will have to be very precise by countering it He was pretty precise, so obviously Good for him. I'm, I actually didn't intend to play The drunker that deep down down the lane. I'm gonna play the skeleton who had to pretty much prevent most damage and I prevent most damage. I think that was quite successful at that uh, My drunker will force out a response, which is very cute. And I think they're kind of bowling right now They have no troubles in our position. I'm gonna play ghost against this Steel hammer just to mitigate the damage or absolutely um, miss this hit Either way we're gonna go for the general since he doesn't have uh, the best hand to defend it and if he plays skeletons I'm gonna play the necromancer and yeah that's gonna be already a very strong attack which he'll have to be very precise if he wants to defend that actually he was very precise so I'm, go I'm gonna give him that that was a very nice play and I think right now he's gonna just go for the counter attack because that's how this matchup works uh, I'm gonna go for the drunker on the um, unfortunately for the general uh, the gunner will get a ton of value for him and yeah I'm gonna give him a nice play because he played it very nice uh, right now he doesn't have the general so obviously we can go for more of an exposed defense I'm gonna go for archers like this and he's gonna actually get a very nice poison I'm gonna go for the general in the back just try to complicate the game a bit Let's see how my opponent will respond. I'm gonna go for the Drunker as well, because honestly, why not? I'm gonna go right now for the Footman Keg and Ghost. I'm gonna go for Archers as well. Ghost will be absolutely insane on the defense. And right now, we're gonna just go for the General on the opposite side, since I think he'll just have some troubles with defending. First of all, the General that already locked, and second of all, the General that is uh, right now coming and this archer is actually getting so much value that's that's actually a very valuable archer i'm gonna let this steel hammer go on the on the left side because frankly if i were to react to this he could have been uh, brave enough to go for the general which obviously would have been a correct play and then he might have been uh, able to win the game. I'm gonna go for a drunker general because it's pretty much the uh, main idea of this deck. Uh, I think I'm gonna be able to bridge this mortar and get one sh shot with the general and I absolutely am. I'm gonna play ghost in the back. I'm gonna play the uh, skeleton hut just to <coughs> prevent his general from ever touching my tower. He's gonna get a one hit, which is absolutely fine for me. I'm gonna get a general in the front myself. I'm gonna get a flying bomb. And with that being said, with, I think we get a very convincing dub to start this video. GG's nice play against John, who put up a very nice fight, but unfortunately, or fortunately for whoever you're cheering for, we take the dub and that's gonna be uh, written in the books. So yeah, uh, that was a game number one. Let's jump to game number two. And my second opponent in uh, today's video will be Foda Se, who starts very quickly and gets two shots with a bomb girl, which is definitely not something that I like to see. But at the same time, I'm gonna just set up a drunker. I'm gonna probably even set up the ghost and the general, because honestly, why not? He wasted a lot of mana to support his bomb there, so he might just well all in with the general, and I think that's gonna be already a lot of damage that uh, I will get back, and it's absolutely perfect because obviously steel bait players absolutely hate defending without one tower, and 
that's exact situation I'm gonna be bringing my men into. So we're gonna be basically chilling in this matchup. I'm gonna play a Necromancer right here to delete the Bomb Girl, because honestly why not? If you're controlling the pace of the game, like I've said multiple times, you can pretty much do anything you want. And my opponent is definitely not happy with his position, since he is gonna be defending without uh, a whole one tower, which is definitely not something that you want to see as a bait player, or any psycho player for that matter. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna be basically chilling. I'm gonna just play Dr Drunker in the back. Let's see if he plays a missile against it. He's gonna actually play a, a phone keg, which is very bizarre choice. He's also playing a uh, rolling steel to basically clear everything in his path. I'm gonna play a footman keg. On the front, since he doesn't have a, a rolling steel anymore, he's gonna get a lot of value. The general will get a lot of value while being on Manus. He plays a rolling steel in the back for, I don't know, maybe banter? Maybe he's just that frustrated. You never know. I'm gonna just play safety go so he doesn't play any shenanigans bomb girls. I'm gonna play archers. I'm gonna play general. Basically, I'm gonna try to kill him right here because I think my friend Fodasei realized the flaws of his position and he knows he cannot overcome them against a player of my caliber. GG's nice play, that's gonna be the second game. Actually, yeah, it's gonna be the second game of today's video. Very easy, very swift. Let's jump to the game number three. So basically, I forgot to share the history of this deck, why I am playing this particular variation today. My opponent will be a pole, so I kinda have to focus, but at the same time, the story time is never a bad time. I'm gonna play a flying bomb here uh, against uh, the swordsman and uh, yeah, I'm gonna actually let him cross because I want to get a value out of my necromancer. Let's see how many apes can we get before it dies a horrible death and I think that's already a very nice number. I'm gonna play general on the opposite side because I know for a fact that he's drained and it's not a joke. He's gonna play a, a bomber which is very nice a counter shot. I'm not gonna get as much damage that I was intending initially so that was a very nice play of him but yeah I was kinda caught with pants down because I didn't have a good response to his T-Rex but he didn't have a good response to my general once the apes were cleared out. That was kind of my timing. I could have gone with the general on the side where the uh, where were the uh, apes, uh, and that would have been uh, I would say um, maybe even a wiser move. But I've decided to go on the side uh, that was the opposite to that, and that uh, worked out as well. I'm gonna just go for the general and ranker combo because I can. That's honestly the biggest reason why I got, went for that. I'm gonna get two hits, I think. There we go. And right now we are pretty much in an unlosable position, especially that he wasted a cyclone on uh, uh, on killing archers, which wouldn't have done anything. He shouldn't be playing like this, but he did, and that's pretty very sad because. Obviously, you don't want to give up your MMR that easily. I'm gonna play Necromancer and a Drunker to pretty much minimize the damage that this Graver uh, Cemetery will do. And I'm gonna instantly go for the uh, uh, for the counterplay on the opposite side. He's gonna get a very nice Cyclone on uh, the Apes, so it's not gonna deal anything. I'm gonna play the archers just to clean up this T-Rex as fast as it's physically possible and so it uh, doesn't create any pressure uh, on my tower. I'm gonna actually play the defensive footman keg and this necromancer should be enough to clean it up. Even, <laughs> even the necromancer got madness so it was very efficient at clearing the skeleton uh, cemetery and yeah that was pretty much a hard counter i would say 
Obviously, Necromancer being a, a trick card uh, in this deck, you usually see it only with a Viking Bear spam, but it's also very good against Symmetry. So if ever Symmetry becomes a meta, you will always see the Necromancer. Obviously, it's not like I'm creating a counter meta deck. It's kind of a me trying uh, out uh, many different decks and I just happened to completely hard counter this guy. So yeah, GG's nice played. He played well, but obviously Necromancer is always good against Symmetry. Let's jump to the game number four. And the next meta will be against Raksu with six metals. So basically in the previous game, I wasn't able to uh, say a lot about uh, the history of this deck is another deck that I've uh, that I've kind of uh, remembered it existed in the past uh, when I was testing many decks with my friend and kind of uh, for we kind of uh, remembered then a lot of many decks my opponent actually doesn't respond to anything I play so that's gonna be very inconvenient either way uh, we were testing uh, many decks to be played and this deck was absolutely um, uh, fitting for me in particular because it's actually a general that kinda doesn't have any bad matchup in uh, in a way. You kinda don't get hard counter by anything because you can always just sit back, defend forever and outplay. Obviously there are like matchups that are unfavorable, but uh, this is one of the decks that uh, if you kinda want to play for a win in every single game and don't want to like get the advantage in one matchup and get the disadvantage in a other one, you kinda always can play this deck because it's just so very solid. You have the big spell, obviously not two small spells. You have the general, which can be played either at the bridge or stacked for the two generals. You have the skeleton hut, which is a very versatile defensive card. You have the necromancer, which kinda creates the play on offense and is very solid on defense, especially against symmetry, like you've seen in the previous game. Very solid and well-rounded deck overall and like I've said, uh, if you don't want to get hard countered, uh, you kind of want to go this deck because it's just very solid. Either way, let's jump to the last game of today's video. And it's gonna be against cons with 10 medals and starting with a bomb girl at the bridge. I'm gonna respond with archers, obviously very solid response. My opponent will be playing bomber, which is obviously a understandable response. I'm gonna play a skeleton hub, just a solid response. Obviously, after say after seeing the uh, bomber, I probably should have gone for the general in the back instantly, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Obviously, I would have been uh, three more mana up ahead, but yeah, li like I've said, it doesn't really matter too much, at least for me, because I'm gonna get my setup anyway and my opponent will have to respond to that uh, accordingly because if he doesn't it's gonna be very tough for him to defend i'm gonna play flying bomb here to absolutely wreck his uh, position i'm gonna play necromancer now just to turn these skeletons into apes and he is forced to defend over and over again it's definitely the position where you want to put your opponent especially after playing skeletons is just the most frustrating thing ever just to defend these apes and it wasn't like the cheap defense he had to i mean it was actually the very cheap defense for him but sometimes your opponent won't have the bomber which is like the best counter to the necromancer ever uh, sometimes it would be very costly so obviously the necromancer very nice response my opponent actually playing some very very interesting cycle deck which i do not approve of uh, with the bomber and bomb girl and then a super ape kind of psycho uh, elements I'm gonna play drunker here just to uh, allow the super ape to get only one hit I think it's a very nice mitigation of the damage especially because it's an equal trait uh, first of all and second of all uh, yeah uh, your opponent pretty much can't counter it unless like he freezes or something which is beyond stupid so I kind of uh, assured myself a very nice trade and my opponent doesn't have too good of a responses against uh, general so I'm kind of abusing it. I'm gonna play a footman keg here to get this bomb girl. Honestly I absolutely misplayed it. Shouldn't be 
that sloppy here, but at the same time it doesn't really matter. He plays a blitz, which is absolutely weird play. He's gonna be playing a super ape uh, right here, which is, I think, a uh, understandable play. At the same time, the position I think demands something bigger uh, from him right now. So yeah. Also, I kinda need to uh, take my opponent's tower, but uh, it only takes one flying bomb, and that's gonna be all over for my opponent. And that's gonna be GG's nice plate. He kinda calls me lucky. Maybe I was lucky. Maybe I got some insane advantages at the beginning of the game, but it doesn't really matter. I kinda feel like his deck was very weird and I think I could have beaten him either way, but maybe he's right, maybe I got lucky. I don't know what you think, let me down in the comments down below what you think about this matchup if you actually reached the end of today's video. And if you did, I'm really grateful for you. If you did also, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you aren't already because I post Boomer in the content every single day and you definitely don't want to miss out on mo more like amazing content like this one. So yeah, thanks for watching once again, appreciate you. I'm gonna see you guys in the next episode of Marina with even more crazy decks.